friends i hope it is a, it is a great morning and all of you are really busy and uh, preparation for exams and everything and good morning once again and uh, we have a very renowned uh, transport planning professor with us today and we were colleagues in the spa delhi for a long time and then even i worked with him for some project and he was he was also very keen um, you know involved in the transportation policy or national policy also and then many 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 projects and all we worked on that and um, it is really a great opportunity for you to interact and listen from you know, such an expert for last three decades and you know four decades it's a huge um, uh, you know professional and uh, practical experience is going to become discussed here and um, i hope that you will all enjoy and then uh, make free feel free to discuss the points with sir very uh, friendly and uh, you make use of the time one and a half hours or two hours and really you will be enriched with knowledge and then i will request now professor rangnathan sir please start your your you know talk here please okay okay dear rajak dear friends good morning to all of you Uh, Razak introduced me as a, a renowned transport planner. <laughs> he is a he made a mistake. He should have introduced me as a old transport planner. <laughs> uh, I retired in 1996. That is nearly 26 years back. So I have become obsolete as far as the transportation planning techniques and other uh, technologies are concerned. I only know the basics, and I just wanted to chat with you. I am not going to. talk about the techniques of transportation planning you know better than your faculty know better than me but i just want to chat what is wrong in our approach to urban transport planning what are the issues that are emerging but before i start i just want to share an anecdote or a sort of a story yeah in one of the institutions famous institutions like sbav the institution uh, faculty invited mulla nasruddin to give them a talk mulla nasruddin was a very famous scholar intellectual and uh, very well known so they wanted their students to sort of get the benefit of his advice so he came after the formal introductions he stood up and he asked them the audience have you read my books nobody raised their hand and he said if you have not read my books you will not understand anything what i say and he walked away the whole audience was stunned what is this he became all the way expectations and he has walked away but then after 6 months still they wanted him to come and talk to them because he was such an intellectual and they wanted to share his ideas so again they invited him so again he came and this time after the formal introductions he asked them have you read my books everyone raised their hand then he said if you have read my books there is nothing more i could say and he walked away so don't worry i am not going to walk away because i have not read, written anything for you to read so you have to bear with me whatever i say today well see the world has experienced many revolutions and we are also experiencing revolutions we the world had what is called as a demographic revolution you know we are now about 8 billion people but when the when the first billion reached it was in the year 1820 and now the next billion will be reached within less than 18 years and that is how the demographic revolution is taking place in the world and india is no exception then we had industrial revolution which of course india missed or rather was blocked we could not get the benefit of that then of course the political revolutions like french russian china and india's independence movement and then in post independent india we have revolutions called green revolution white revolution technological revolution demographic revolution of course the size has increased from 33 million to 120 million urbanization has increased from 11% 10 to be 50% but 11% of 33 million is only 3 million and uh, 
or three point something, and fifty percent of sixteen hundred million will be eight hundred million, and that is the change in the urbanization size. And then we had what we termed as an automobile revolution. In fact, we are still in the initial stage of automobile revolution in the country. We'll come back to that. And then, of course, they say the future revolution in India will be education, educational revolution, and that is taking place. You can see that the type of new types of educations that is being taught, people are learning, and particularly digital revolution. These two, educational revolution and digital revolution, will transform India to hopefully a much better and prominent country. And you are all the beneficiary of such a revolution. We missed it. Okay, we the world is in a flux of change. Do you recall Tennyson in Morty Arthur? He famously said, "Old order changes, yielding place to new." And God fulfills Himself in many ways. Lest one good custom should corrupt the world. What he means is yes. Even if it is good, it must change. It is for better of the world that you the change takes place. The change is inevitable. We are experiencing everyday change in our life, and change is necessary. If you want to progress, you have to change from one system, one value to the new systems, to new values, and it is. how we progress is depends upon our ability to adopt and adapt to change this is where the problem comes change takes place whether you like it or not but if you want to get the benefit of that change you must have the ability to adopt yourself to that change and then adapt change to your benefit when you fail that one then you will find lot of problems one thing that is very clear is in the transport urban transport sector that we have not been able to fully adopt and adapt to the change that is taking place on our streets and our network systems okay the other changes are of course economic change which is gdp is growing at a higher rate and we're back to normal rate of high rate of growth but and india you know we poverty elevation it is a very renowned people do not appreciate more than 200 million people i understand have been lifted above poverty it's a great thing to happen and it is not a very easy thing to happen yes that is happening so when these people move to the higher levels of income their aspirations and needs will be different change and to satisfy their aspirations and needs what they require is essentially ability to move their mobility and their accessibility so we will come back to that when transport planners have a great role in enabling these people to enjoy what they have missed all these days and what the world can offer to them then of course we have social revolution in fact i wanted to title my talk or rather chat as a, a neglected dimension of urban transport planning because razak my friend being a sociologist when he invited me so i thought let me say how we have failed the people as far as sociology as aristotle said man is a social animal and um, everything that you do planning is in the name of people for the people but when you do the planning you get immersed in the 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 uh, what you can call the complexities or charismas of technology that you forget people you are more interested in uh, techniques you are more interested in uh, figures you are more interested in uh, sophisticated uh, models etc and uh, people are forgotten we become they, they become just numbers and that is very bad and in fact that is happening in urban transport i feel very bad i have also contributed to that depression say now introspection i feel um, how it could have been better but anyhow we have lived it at least in the future when we you do something for the people remember it is not for the sake of doing developing a system it is for the benefit of the people as long as you are sure 
that it benefits the common man in some way or other, then you should be happy to do that one. If your answer is no, it is not going to benefit, or rather a large, a large number of people would be left out of your solution, which is happening, I'll come back to this, today's metro, a large number of people are left out of that metro system. Why? So let's discuss that later. So then we should be very careful, circumspect of what is going wrong. If you have to do a system development, do it, but then do it in such a way that it is accessible to everyone on a most inclusive basis. Now, I talked about the change, demographic change that is taking place. Well, one major change that is taking place, change in our country is the urbanization level. From 11%, we are moving towards 50%. I told you the, in terms of absolute figures, it is somewhere between uh, 3.6 million to nearly 800 million. That's a big change. And are we ready? Then it's going to happen in a very short period, by 2050, less than 30 years. I retired in uh, almost 26 years back. So 30 years is a very small period in the life of a nation. And this big change that is going to take place is, are we ready for it? Are we able to accommodate it? Are we able to uh, get the benefit of this change? Well, one the role, one profession has to play a major role of, among many other professions is that is the transport planners and urban planners. Okay, what change brings is the change in values and mores. What our parents thought, we don't believe in. What our what we thought, our student children don't believe. You know, Pope has said in one way. Hmm? So why is our children have become that they think their fathers are fools till their children think so? This is what is happening in the world. In the change, we think the older values are obsolete, anarchic, and so it is best to be forgotten. But that is okay. But then what is one important in the change is change in demand, both in the type of demand and in the size of demand. And that is true in urban transport also. The type of demand in travel is changing. In fact, you will be surprised when I come to the end where the demand is scenario is changing to. I will keep it as a suspense for present. And then of course, the size. One thing, when we are trying to meet the demand in urban transport planning, please appreciate that transport is a major element inducing change. It helps in the change process. But what is important to note is that that could be a, in the positive direction. It could also be in the negative direction. So it's our effort to see, maximize the positive aspects and minimize and avoid the negative impacts. Well, I talked to you about India's demographic change urbanization. They say India's urbanization is rapid, whether you agree or not. They say it is very massive, of course that cannot be denied. And recently I read, somebody has described India's urbanization as reluctant urbanization. That we don't want it to happen, but it is just happening and we just follow. Which means that it is not a planned urbanization process that we are going through. It is sort of a, it is not a directed urbanization process. It is an urbanization process that is happening on its own and we are trying to follow it. Though we had in 1988 a national urbanization policy, we'll just come back to that later. It, but I think the process of urbanization is uh, left to itself and we are just following it. Okay, what is important that we will end up as per the present trend as the uh, projections indicate that we may end up with 800 million urban, more than 10,000 urban centers, more than 100 metropolitan cities, more than 1,000 class 1 cities and so on. But this is the present trend, but will it be so? 
or should it be so? But before that poem, I have one grouse against the definition of urban area itself. Our definition of urban settlement is a very complex one. You all know, I don't want to repeat it. But have you noticed it, its gender bias? It says the third condition, more than 75% of male workers in non-agricultural occupations. Male workers, why male? Why not all workers, including female? Well, at one time, female workers were not very thing. They are not participating. But today it is not so. And our definition is also in not in tune with the definition of many countries. Many countries say, some countries say even 2,000 plus is an urban. Most countries say 5,000 plus is an urban. China, in the last three decades, has revised its definition of urban area three times. But we have stuck to our own definition, a complex one. And thereby, today, when we say 34%, I feel it is highly underestimated. If you change your definition to say 5,000 plus, perhaps we are already more than 50% or even more urban. So that means we are missing a large number of people who come under this classification, but we do not, but do not get any uh, special attention as far as urban planning and development is concerned. So that is one bias to start with, where gender bias is. Now, urban development is, of course, India is historically famous for its urban planning, Mohanjadaro Harappa civilization, but that is history. But even as post-independence, urban development started receiving attention, but not very critical attention. But over a period of time, in the recent years, what has happened is, earlier, urban planning was part of, the main objective was health. It was part of the health ministry. How to promote health of the people. And that is where the building regulations came, offset, front offset, side offset, etc., etc., windows, so that um, light and air can flow through your rooms to keep you healthy. But sometime, some few years, decades back, we moved out from health to emphasis to economics because money is important. Money, everybody is happy to have more and more money. So urban development became a means of generating money. And I think that is bad. And that implication you could have seen in the recent uh, COVID-19. See how much um, trouble it caused. For two years, the entire country was locked down almost. And um, we have to spend, revive our health facilities in such a major way to sort of fight this uh, uh, pandemic. But we did. That is one good thing, one thing about the resilience of the Indian people, Indian system, we did go through it, but we did overcome it, except somehow now, now and then we find still COVID is still prevalent in a sort of a milder form. Okay, let's hope it will completely get out. But it has taught us a great lesson, and one major lesson is in urban transport planning. It has made urban transport planning almost um, what you call as a, uh, unnecessary, because if anything can be done with work from home to work from any place, then the, all other activities can be satisfied virtually, then why move at all? And if there is no movement, there is no transport planning. But don't get disordered. No, 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 that is not true. There, if the work trips are going to come down, education trips are going to come down, there are other trips that will increase. The recreational trips will increase. He says changing mobility pattern. This is what is going to happen in the next 50 years, 30 years. The more and more recreational trips will increase. In uh, 1978 Delhi study, work trips accounted for 72% of all the trips made. And education trips was not even counted as a separate head. But today, I think work trips in Delhi would be in the range of 40% plus few percent upper name. Education trips is more than 30%. Recreation trips are increasing very high. So there is 
a changing pattern in the pattern of mobility also and thereby the type of um, systems that need to service these changing travel demands would be something different from what we are presently used to where during the peak hour there is a strong concentration of flows in one direction and in the evening in the other direction and thereby capacity capacity augmentation capacity augmentation eight lanes 16 lanes metros lrt what not <coughs> but then what happens other 16 hours if six hours are the peak period the rest uh, uh, 18 hours the system will be highly underutilized can we afford that one well we'll come back to that one or keep it as a question for yourself well it is in 1988 that uh, till the recently urban transport nobody bothered in fact we urban transport planners used to start any paper saying urban transport is an orphan but today it is not so 1988 uh, urbanization policy brought attention to the importance of urban transport saying that it is the one most critical element or important element in the development of urban in the process of urbanization and urban development well over a period of time suddenly there is a great interest there are too many patrons now today that is another problem there are too many patrons everyone is an expert in that area and thereby each one is pulling the urban transport system development in different directions and whoever has a clout of money or power will have his say accepted otherwise people will be others will be left behind and then have to simply accept what's happening and that is one thing uh, abdul may not agree with me that is one thing that is happening in development of metros every city irrespective of demand irrespective of size wants a metro because it is an image building uh, process apart from that one it brings lot of money investment every kilometer of metro at elevated cost about 300 kilometers 300 crores per 3000 million per kilometer and underground cost 5000 million per kilometer so it generates lot of employment during a construction and during operation also cut off thing so everybody wants a metro but whether the money invested is optimally utilized or whether there are other alternatives which could have been better for the city is an issue one does not see any debate in that area okay what is important well trans economies have said have accepted but in a lukewarm way the importance of transport they say transport is necessary but not sufficient so they leave it at that one they only want to utilize transport as to the extent it serves their other objectives but beyond that one they forget transport but social needs must be more important about transport because transport is a major element in promoting social cohesion social change and uh, that is where we have not fully recognized rather not fully appreciated and planned for how transport could be a tool in promoting social change but one you must also remember whether it is transport is an integrative integrating element in this is in the urban area that is true but it is also a very disruptive element so while you are enthusiastic to develop um, transport systems you must also be careful how to minimize its disruptive aspect disruptive aspect in terms of land consumption in terms of barriers transport corridors are barriers for social mobility if you build a major highway expressway or even an arterial road the people on either side of the road so they never meet and interact and so also the major corridors so it is also a disruptive element it affects social mobility but with all that large investments are taking place in transport sector 
and transport continues to be more tense. So we must be very careful in what is called as urban transport, PDOM. What is called planning, which includes policy, development, which includes design, then operation and management. All these four steps are important before you get a good transportation system. So, you have in the transportation planning process, of course, first the objectives, policy, the objectives, and then of course you do extensive surveys and then you do transport models, you develop transportation plans, adopt technology. Earlier there were different names were called for transportation plan. We had comprehensive traffic and transportation study, CTTS, change to mobility plan, change to transport management plan, change to uh, transport impact plans and thereby they, they the, uh, the title, the emphasis keeps on changing, but the basic thing remains. How do we enable people to move, to access and to get connected? Of course, what is wrong in our transportation plan? Well, we do such extensive planning work and develop systems at high cost. We Leave it at that one. I don't think there are very many major studies of impact. Metros have been developed in almost Delhi has got nearly nearly 400 kilometers of metro line. I have not seen any impact study of metro at how it has affected whom and physically, socially, economically. They only claim it is it is for reducing congestion, but congestion is not reduced in Delhi. They say it will minimize pollution, but pollution is not minimized in Delhi. So they are not the answer, they are the partial answers. Maybe to that extent that many trips pollution could have been reduced. But overall the city's pollution level remains as critical as ever. So that means what is happened? What is, what 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 for we are investing such large sums? And that too, you see the distortion that is taking place in our investment policy. Delhi, since 2002, that's just about 20 years, I think, when the metro started, has received more than 100,000 crores of money for metro development. And what about DTC? No fleet increase was uh, took place in DTC all these years. Only in the recent, uh, about two years, three years back, they are trying to add some more fleet. The result, metros are started with high ambition of achieving a model share of 70 to 80 percent. But do you know what has happened in all our urban areas mostly? The model share has come down. The public transport share has come down. It is a very uh, disappointing uh, situation. But we are not concerned with it, the way that we are investing money without doing an impact study and understanding what are the outputs. Then more important impact and outputs. What are the outcomes? What is the outcome of a metro system? Can we answer? Apart from carrying people, which is of course is a basic role, but is that all is the uh, outcome of a metro system or there is something more? economically, socially. Socially is very great. It brings people, connects people spread out and far up area in an especially uh, especially at far off. So they to bring them together to get connected. Social, social cohesion, transportation system, metro system should enable social cohesion. But is that happening? I doubt. Because accessibility to metro itself has now become a question. I'll come back to that one. You remember transport modes are a great mode for sociability. But I think it is uh, 
Sharad Yadav, the Janata Dal president of Bihar, once made a caustic remark about air passengers. They say these air passengers are zombies. For three hours or two and a half hours of flight, each one sitting in his seat without talking to his neighbor. Nobody talks to that, but I have observed even me, including me. We don't talk to the neighbor, you just put on your belt and just keep looking further and further ahead and I think and two hours passes away. But which is the mode that most sociable? I see by my experience, it is the railways are the best mode for sociabilities. Because when you try to enter a low, uh, crowded compartment, everybody inside the compartment will try to block you. But the moment once you are able to get in by whatever means, when we were student, we used to, from Karakpur to Chennai to go, we used to take, one student will take four other students as a companion, just for them to push him through the window into the carriage. He could not enter through the door. But once you are inside the compartment, then you are part of the crowd. Then you will start developing so, uh, friendship, you keep on talking, you share moonfalis, you share whatever this thing, you play and uh, all sorts of things happen. And you, by the time you end your journey, you are very thick friends. In fact, I remember my nephew, young boy, he travelled from Bangalore to Delhi and he made a friend with a, a middle-aged person. And they became so close friends and they found a common uh, interest, philately. With the result, that gentleman invited this boy to his house and gave him a lot of his collection, philately collections, radiated collection. Keep it. I am very impressed by your interest in philately. So this is what happens, sociability in a mode, that only railways can promote such sociability. Maybe to some extent bus, but never your metros, I have not seen people talking to each other. They are only cursing each other. They only just stand and then spend their time. And particularly nowadays, nobody wants to talk to anybody because you have your mobile in your hand and WhatsApp messages will be flying across. Okay, that is another aspect that is where comes social change, the type of change that is taking place. Now, transportation planning urban has got many objectives starting from mobility, accessibility, uh, accessibility, connectivity, safety, then of course other uh, uh, objectives have been we keep on adding energy consumption, uh, conservation, environmental quality, equity of access, inclusiveness, then sustainability, etc. You can go on adjectives. But primarily, let us concentrate on the three main, mobility, accessibility and connectivity. And these are the major objectives of a transportation uh, planning and development and operation and management. Now, what is the role of a transportation planner? What do you think if you are a transportation planning or even urban planner, after you pass out, what do you think that you are going to do as planning for urban transport systems. We have great uh, great uh, assumptions of ourselves, of our ability that we are going to move the world. But to put, to puncture your, this ego, I say, when transportation planners role is only two, or only two. One, to develop transportation facilities, transport facilities, and two, to provide transport service. These are the only two things that he is supposed to do. Develop transport facilities, provide transport service. All other things that we are putting together in that the technology, knowledge that is developing around is how best we can do these two things. And if you get immersed in your technique and technologies and models, but you forget that these two objects you do, then of course your end output, your out, your system will not be efficient or effective everything. So given these two simple objectives, then these things are for what purpose? Why do we provide transport facilities? 
and provide transport service only for three things one to enable mobility two to facilitate accessibility and three to promote connectivity these are the three basic ingredients of any planning particularly transportation planning mobility people should be able to move provide accessibility you must be able to access opportunities the urban area offers and then people should get connected that is where social issues comes in how transport promotes sociability social cohesion after all at the end of the day we are planning for people people want to be want companionship even god wanted companionship that is why he created adam because he felt lonely and then adam felt lonely then he created out of his bones a woman but of course then came the snake and then the forbidden fruit and then there the result we are all there we are all uh, successors of uh, of uh, descendants of adam and eve and today we are 9 billion nearly so people want companionship they want to be connected yes you may say that we are get we get connected virtually virtual connection is good for something sometime but that really does not give the satisfaction and that feeling of oneness uh, when as physical connection so transport plan is tries to achieve these three out of these three the first two plus one more i'll add the mobility proximity and connectivity these are the base when these three things are done together then they enable accessibility so mobility proximity and connectivity are the means of achieving the end accessibility because urban area is an area of high opportunities it could be work opportunity it could be education it could be recreational it could be health it could be any thing opportunity to satisfy your needs and aspirations to access this opportunity you need mobility you need connectivity and of course the other thing proximity it is enabled through land use planning that is why we always say land use and transport are in interrelated or integrated proximity is very important but it's not through transportation planning but transportation systems will help in promoting proximity so there is a the symbiotic uh, relationship between land use and transport which is very well accepted but um, well partly done partly not very much well done so these three things are critical and out of that the mobility is the starting point which means how do we define and measure mobility definition is very clear saying ability to move from one place to another simple definition there could be many other definitions more complicated more sophisticated but we will leave it at one we'll keep to this present de- simple definition ability to move from one place to another that is what we enable uh, through our system development and operation that is what we are trying to provide we are making people able to move from one place to another accessibility is ability to access opportunities how do you access opportunity it is not enough to move but you must be able to access opportunities they could be work education health recreation or any other things or even social interaction and then of course connectivity is feeling being connected connectivity has two aspects one is one definition is the state of being connected or interconnected or the quality or state or capability of being connected or the ability to connect this is one aspect but there is connectivity this is this are all physical aspect there is also a social connectivity happen is the experience of feeling close and connected to others this is very important experience of feeling close 
and connected to others it increases feeling of love cared for and valued and further the basis of interpersonal relationship at the end of the day you feel to be loved to be feel and then interpersonal relationship and the importance of social connectivity is that it can lower anxiety and depression it can help regulate our emotions it can lead to higher self esteem and empathy and then it can improve our immune systems that is what they say so transport has a major role in promoting social connectivity do you recall maslow's hierarchy of human needs and these are all the things related and to achieve those human needs maslow's hierarchy starting from the physiological to the intellectual right self actuation you will see that every stage to get to that level to experience that level to enjoy that level that you need a good transportation system it is a more good now let's come back to mobility because professor has told me to talk about changing trends in mobility but let us understand the what is the issues of mobility and how good we are able to capture the mobility issues or mobility even the size and dimension of course we said the definition the number of ability to move from one place to another the measure of mobility is the number of movements that takes place average per person per day you know today if you look at thing almost the entire city is on movement in a day the per capita trip rate as it called the number of trips average thing per person per day is almost one that means the entire city is on the streets moving for whatever purpose or whatever length or whatever i cost at whatever time so everybody is mobile and moving but somebody is having um, higher mobility as you call and somebody is having very difficult mobility how that based on your measurement of the mobility now today we are measuring mobility expressing as pctr you must be already familiar with this terminology per capita trip rate now what you know what's happening the per capita trip rate is continuously increasing and um, in 1970s i recall as i recall delhi per capita trip rate was 0.5 today the per capita trip rate must be more than one that means it is more than doubled but mobility is not only number of person trips it has other dimensions i'll come back to that one any anyway, what i am telling is the per capita the mobility is continuously increasing where it is increasing is the question now the trend trend is of course one in terms of size or number but in time trend is in terms of type now if you see as i say, earlier said delhi work trip for accounted for 72% today is less than 40, not less than just about 40% plus 40 41 43 not more than 45% then where did the other trips come in education trip was not even counted then as listed as a separate trip it was meant under general now it is more than 30% it is true for vijayawada also it is true for many cities a recreation trips are in the country increasing social trips were not there it is now increasing so the mobility pattern both in terms of size as well as in terms of pattern is in changing changing from work trip to other trips recreation trips mostly health trips education trips etc but this pctr measure is too general is too abstract it hides many things now pctr by what means it needs to be understood analyzed and by segregation in disaggregation that 
who is traveling young people middle aged people old people you know india is becoming moving towards old age people the old age people more than 60 plus is increasing in terms of percentage so they need a separate system mobility the youngsters need something different the children need something different so unless you know the pattern of movement by disaggregation by age by income you will not be able to properly plan we are planning at an abstract pctr number 1 3 million people or 30 million people 30 million trips a normative model split of 70% so 21 million public transport trips so you need a metro system of high capacity go ahead and there the planners role ends the technologies and the engineers take over and they go on putting extensive network sophisticated uh, uh, modern technologies everything gleaming and everybody is happy at the end of the day nobody is happy in fact they, they are not able to access the system okay so we need to sort of re express this mobility measure a little bit more extreme so what by what more pctr by what more by what length so this is very important passenger kilometer becomes important measure of Uh, mobility not just person trips but person kilometer and this is another trend that is taking place that the because of the physical expansion of the city the average trip kilometer is continuously increasing again it is almost doubling in a period of about 2 to 3 decades just imagine what's happening the population of the city is doubling in about 2 decades professor will confirm it maybe few years up and down every two decades the city population doubles as per the thumb rule the mobility the trips number of trips are almost doubling and the trip length if not doubling at least one and a half times for easy argument sake let us say it is doubling which means when the city has doubled in size the travel demand has increased by eight times yes will you please appreciate this one the travel demand in the same time period of two decades when the city has doubled in size has increased by nearly 6 to 8 times and that is why you find whatever you do in tra- urban transport thing lot of investment takes place the highways expressways lrt trams and metros but you will find congestion has not left us because we have still not been able to keep pace with the increase in demand with all our effort we still lag behind now this is one basic trend that we must appreciate that rate of increase of demand of travel is so high that we it requires much much more than simply developing and operating systems we have to look at the basic cause and that is where the urbanization policy urban pattern regional development etc come into importance which of course we have completely neglected so far now one my grows when we are planning pctr we take number 1 Oh, as one or whatever point eight. By the way, Chennai, Chennai is recorded a PCTR of more than two. I think two point four something like that. Motorized one point four and uh, walk and non motorized vehicles about one. You can check Chennai master plan, and it is about two point four or something like that. It's a very high mobility thing. People, everybody seems to be moving, moving, moving. For what for? Of course, absolutely just to for economic. to earn their living but not only that but now people are moving for education they are moving for social interactions social this thing and so many other aspects so mobility measure so when we are planning when you take just an abstract value of 
electricity are as one per passenger kilometer and plan for that one we are going to miss many nuances of the demand pattern and thereby you find that our efforts still are not meeting the needs you must now develop the ability to disaggregate at every stage age income purpose and travel demand how much age income and mode selection who is going to choose which mode why he is choosing somebody is keeping walking somebody is moving by car and somebody is moving by uh, metro yes we know we can just generally answer but that is not enough for planning purpose we must go into a little bit more into in depth which area now what's happening is in an urban area for purposes movement when the person needs to move which is of course is part of his need then he has a choice of mode and it is called as spectrum of choice from walk to metro now tomorrow some other latest technology so you can regroup them into three groups walk and nmv and then motorized and between motorized private modes and public transport first grouping normally this is done and then you take public transport mode and try to plan for thing and try to plan for motorized modes in the whole process if you have observed any transportation plan you will find that the first component of walk and nma does not receive planning attention at all you will find lip sympathy is there but actual provisions is not there you develop a road and show a 2 meter or 1 and 1/2 meter footpath and you say that is the end of planning for pedestrians that is not adequate the road network may not be in tune with the desired pattern of the walkers so you, you should develop an alternative network for pedestrians and cyclists you don't do it we develop arterial roads of course at the master plan level we stop at arterial and sub arterial we don't go into the lower order of collector and residential and that is where most critical that the residential area planning for pedestrians and nmvs the collector roads which gets into are important but they don't get the planning attention they are left to be done at the second stage by local area planning but hardly any local area planning is done lot of talk is done on lapis but not very much done and implemented so you find that you have almost by willingly or unwillingly neglected more than 30 to 40% of the trips not only that one your measure your estimate of the number of trips itself is not very accurate why because you start with the planning process dividing your study area into zones traffic zones planning zones they call and then you adopt either planning zones or civic uh, municipality zones and adopt them as traffic zones that is the unit of generation of trip demand now in the planning process you have trips which end within the zone itself what we termed as intrazonal trips which cross the zonal boundary which we termed as intrazonal in the odi matrix so when you assign the od matrix onto the network the intrazonal trips are left off it is only the intrazonal trips that are assigned and from now onwards we are concerned with planning for intrazonal trips now what is wrong with that the wrong is you are missing a large size of travel demand how because of the size of your zone because your zones are dependent on civic zones or some other thing where you can get other data on other variables that you use for modeling process the zonal size is very large it must be delhi must be now 30 million they have recently done the delhi master plan i don't think they have 300 zones but even if you assume 300 zones they have done 
the zonal size is nearly 100,000 people, which means 100,000 trips and 300, 100,000, sorry, 100,000 trips is zone, but of that one, nearly 30 to 35 percent are within that zone, or now it may be even more. So that much trips you ignore in your next stage of system planning, which is a very major impact. And who are the people who are traveling intrazonal? They are women, they are children for education, and they are most important informal workers. I went once to Chandigarh and stayed with my friend's house and I found early in the morning when I got up two cycles near the front door. It was not there in the evening and I was wondering where the cycles have come. And after another half an hour, I find two ladies getting out of the house, get onto the cycle and pedal out. They are the helpers, house helpers, mother and daughter. They have come by cycle. They have done that job and then they have gone to the next house. That is how they are optimizing their time. Otherwise, they have to walk, which means their ability to earn is less. So it is the informal workers who are mostly are intrazonal trip makers. There are, of course, intrazonal also informal workers, but mostly intrazonal trips or informal workers, women and children. And by our planning process, we are just ignoring them. We are not even providing for them. We presume, we presume that they will be taken care of in area planning, in neighborhood planning. But today, neighborhood planning is also not very good. You will find neighborhoods or major areas where accidents and fatalities are taking place, which should not be. In neighborhood, no, no fatality should take place. The road network pattern must be such that that is where the right one concept comes in. No road should be more than 150 meter long. No road must be straight. No road should be allow high speed. But those things are all gone. The neighborhoods are now part of the ex civil area, city area network. All through traffic runs through straight roads. Everybody wants their neighborhood roads to be cement concreted and it encourages high speed by motorbikes, youngsters. When I went to uh, Kenya, I found neighborhood roads are primarily what we call as macadam roads. Not even macadam, they have put stone slabs, thing, and uh, mud. So I thought they have, perhaps they have done this because they are poor. But their arterial and suburban roads are of excellent quality. I never found on their road system even a single pothole. Whereas on our roads, you will find nothing but potholes. So I started asking why if they can do their arterial and suburban roads in such a good manner, why not in the residential roads? It took me some time and later on I realized in residential roads, the speed, nobody can travel more than 15 kilometers per hour. Even if he wants whatever the technology he has got, you may have the best car under his steering, but he will not be able to travel more than 15 kilometers per hour. And that is where the safety is achieved. Look at our residential areas. Oh, everybody wants the road to be cement concreted, and then later on blame the children are biking their thing at high speed, zooming, and fatalities taking place, at least accidents taking place. So this is another concept of how you build in your network planning, in your operation system, the safety aspect, which is an important component of transportation objective. So coming back, the intrazonal trips, we miss a large number of them, and that is where the, the need to relook at our zoning system. Today, the capability of having small zones is there. Your new software, Cube and Visum and Visum and whatnot, whatnot, they are all able to enable you to have more than 10,000 uh, zones in, in your study area. But we do not do it. We have the technology capability in our hand, but we do not do it. Maybe for many reasons, maybe inertia, maybe we feel not necessary. 
but mostly that we feel that you will not be able to get the other input variables zone wise so you get restricted to that condition where the other variables are available each zone wise so your zone size gets limited to that size which means that in actual terms you are missing a large size of travel demand out of your planning process so this is another thing when we are talking about mobility changing pattern first you must understand that we are not even completely taking care of our existing mobility and of course mobility changing pattern keeps changing as we discussed here. now one major issue that we ignore in my mobility is walk you know walk trips account for more than 30 to 35 percent of the total trips in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, when we went there, we, had, we found that their earlier studies indicated walk trips accounted for as much as 70 percent. And when we did our household survey, we found that in a period of 10 years, they had come down to 60 percent. But still, walk trips are 60 percent and are quite long, more than 10 kilometers sometimes. Now, which means what? People cannot afford the motorized or whatever they think, IPTs was the main thing. They, had, they are poor. The one reason, one thing that you must keep in mind that higher the mobility, possibly higher the income level. You can correlate mobility with income and you find, and we did it, that higher the mobility, higher the income level. But what happens when you do walk? You lose time. You lose time, that means you can access that opportunity which you can access and avail. Otherwise, within the time, if you keep on walking, then what? who will pay for you? So there is a limitation on accessing the opportunity. If the opportunity is there at a distance, but it is far out, then you don't go there and avail that opportunity, even if you are not employed. So that is the distraction. But within the walk trips, even if 34% is quite high and people, walk trip people are highly vulnerable as you know. You know, long time back there was, uh, Abdul Razak may remember that there was a New Delhi Redevelopment Advisory Committee. Before that one there was a seminar and we, in our paper, we wrote about the urban transport issues that least inconvenience to car users is hotly resisted, but the problems of pedestrians and cyclists are at best debated and forgotten. This was a statement and we wrote that and we said circular draft, the Delhi administration was very angry with us and they put a lot of pressure to remove this sentence. But of course, my boss stuck to it and said, no, it is a fact and we will keep it. And then, then Minister of Urban Development, who later on became the Prime Minister of India, Satish Gujral, he picked it up and repeated it as his statement in his inaugural speech. But then, as usual, that also ended as a debate only. Nothing much is done. A lot of talking is done. A lot of people are talking about walk trips, vulnerable people, promote pedestrians. Yes easy to say but nothing is done on the site and one interesting thing is most people who talk about walkers and cyclists are mostly their users of cars and that is another uh, irony of it okay that doesn't matter but what i am trying to bring out is that in our mobility policies we do not have explicit policies and explicit programs and committed budget to enable mobility of the people who walk or who cycle. By the way, when we did recently a multimodal transport plan for Chennai, one corridor of rail corridor, we found that uh, the Chennai municipality has passed a resolution committing, if I remember, 60% of the budget for enemies. I only hope they are implementing it. 
maybe as part of your research somebody can look into that and how far they have been able to implement their own policy and how effective it has been okay now it comes the trips by motorized mode we are highly biased towards this one and we put lot of our resources in developing expressways and flyovers and what not and what not parking areas etc and then of course the public transport modes the uh, leading to metro system now metros are attracting lot of attention and everybody wants a metro in their city it is because it is a highly image building politicians think that you build a metro he gets reelected his image is built and of course it takes lot of money no problem provided it is effective but do you know how metros are most ineffective delhi again i am using delhi again and again because i know only about delhi even that i know very little now it's all i have become obsolete but little bit i know about delhi i can only say it is true for vijayawada it is true for vishakhapatnam you can check by the way we did a transportation plan for vijayawada where we did all these wrong things as which i am now telling i wish i could have done it a little bit better but anyway that is all it thanks now coming back to metro do you know what is the capacity potential theoretical potential capacity of a metro corridor of 10 kilometers length say with 10 kilometer average strip length can you guess can anybody can guess if you are transportation student okay no problem i will tell it's about 1 million passengers per day a 10 kilometer length of metro if the average trip length on that is 10 kilometer its theoretical potential capacity is 1 million passengers per day what does it mean it means 400 kilometers of network must carry theoretically 40 million okay from theoretical let us come down to practical how much 50% 30% 50% means 20 million passengers per day do you know how much delhi metro is carrying 3 million passengers per day can you see how grossly underutilized it is at such developed at such high cost but nobody wants to get into this issue in fact our effort now should be not to build metro where some lengths have been built but to see that it's more effective carries more passengers how to bring passengers on to the system and why this has happened because there is a fallacy a wrong mistake in our network planning what we do for metro network planning we just follow the road network it is the legacy of the cut and cover method earlier we used to cut the road put the system as in have uh, calcutta and cover it now the same legacy continues whether you are building elevated we follow whether we are building underground we follow the same road network element because it is easy for construction but look at this just remember unlike bombay unlike chennai the city did not grow along with the rail network we are grafting a metro network on to an already developed city structure now what is happening along the city structure the present structure along the arterial roads along the sub arterial roads if you see 1 km on either side who are living there mostly they are rich people car owning people the people who are poor who depend on public transport or beyond 1 km and that is the reason you will find in your mobility that metros are carrying very less than the capacity in bombay i think for the suburban rail system 66% of the passengers walk to the system in chennai along that corridor chennai chengalpet corridor 72% walk but in delhi metro 50% walk 
the rest 50 percent has to come by other modes now what happens already the metro fare structure is quite high if you take average trip length on the metro system is 10 kilometer the fare is about 30 rupees and for that to access the metro station if you have to come by a secondary mode ipt then you have to pay minimum of 10 rupees or 20 rupees at least or 30 rupees which means per trip it will be 30 rupees on the metro another 20 rupees 50 rupees to 60 rupees is the cost of the trip if you calculate thing it becomes a very high proportion of their income and if you are to travel by metro your per capita income must be nearly one and a half lakh and our average per capita income even in a city like delhi is about one and a half lakhs here the large percentage are getting a very small income only a few people 10 percent of the people get 50 percent above the APA and large number of person get very low income so a large by intention or unintention a large number of people one by planning they are beyond walking distance second by fair structure it is beyond their capacity they are denied the access to metro system so we say that we want to promote mobility we want to ensure 70 percent by public transport and for that we need a high capacity mode like metro at the end of the day you find a large number of people are denied access that's why the accessibility not only to opportunity even to the facility is important the metro travel is also can be considered an opportunity to improve your mobility so accessibility becomes important and we in our zeal for building that is what we say that we are more interested in we are suffering from technology fixation as somebody said and build a fixation build more build more build more technology new technology new technology but what happens to that one who uses that's a question left unanswered okay now this is the first part of my lecture professor has asked me to talk about future trends well really i am not competent to talk about future trends in urban transport technology but as as a, an observer i have a right to think and i am thinking loudly now what is happening as i said there is a trip revolution taking place we are moving from walk to high technology so from slow to high speed then what are the trend technology in fact we have been left behind far behind even in cars we have been left behind automobile revolution just yesterday in this whatsapp group uh, your professor was also seen that one the, what is the uh, number of households, percentage of households in India which own a car? Razak, do you recall yesterday somebody has posted 7.5% of households in India own a car. 92.5% do not own a car as of now. Tomorrow they will all own because their in income is increasing, their aspirations are there and they want to own a car. That means we have not even in the middle of the automobile revolution we are at the beginning of the automobile revolution there will be now two there must be about 200 million motorized modes in the country in no time it will be more than 500 million just imagine if 500 to 600 million motorized modes come into the country it may be an underestimate i feel and as a reasonably part now delhi accounts for five percent of the number of vehicles in india that means it is about 10 million and the same percentage holds good then tomorrow if it is 600 million it is 30 million 
between the same network instead of 10 million vehicles if there are going to be 30 million motorized nodes where do, where do you think we will all be sitting in the car and cursing the other fellow why he is using a car and causing congestion you know this is the psychology of the people that you are driving a car but you are cursing the other car owner why he is using car everybody is owning a car more than one and causing congestion you forget that you are also adding to the congestion nobody wants to leave the car it has got that social uh, apart from economic necessity distance to cover the distance and access opportunity but social status becomes important why tata's nano great in innovation failed because they called it a cheap car they, they, their design is of course was like spherical it was like a rolling sphere in a car you need speed and it, the car should, should look like an arrow shooting and if you call it a cheap car nobody wants to buy you must call it a very luxurious car with all the fantastic uh, fantasy equipment now today they have brought what is that champ which comes in the IPL thing, every stadium they have put, new car, nano modified. Eh? So that, I think champ, champ or something like that. Uh, Abdul, you don't remember? You don't see a IPL match, you are a good person, you don't waste your time seeing a cricket, useless game. But anyhow, you can see in IPL games, that car is advertised. That, but they have made it two doors, so that may be a hindrance, but that looks like more like owning a car. An youngster would like to feel happy to own that car. They are not calling it any more cheap car. So, the social status becomes important. So, at the end of the day, you will find new technologies are coming. What are all the new technologies? You have electric vehicles of various denominations, various types of batteries. There is a revolution in battery design taking place. There is a revolution, at least research says that they are going to change the fuel base from fossil fuel to electricity, then to hydrogen. Now, if they say if all this comes, there will be a further revolution in the automobile thing. But automobile will remain, whatever be the fuel base. Then, of course, new technologies, flying, flying taxis, Dubai is already experiencing flying taxis. Then, this Musk is a coming out with his innovation, that is a hyperloop. Hyperloop which says that because he, maglev came long time back, high bullet trains came long time back into the, the countries, we are much, much behind. But hyperloop, I think number of Indian cities are given some money for examining the potential of using. Is Andhra also one? He was at Amravati also, they gave some money for hyperloop planning. Is that? I don't remember. Yeah. But the earlier plan it was, yeah. Possibly it must be. But look at the fallacy. Hyperloop is meant to move at a speed of 1200 kilometers per hour. And if you are saying that if that is the technology and you are going to put it in an urban area where the average bit length is less than 10 kilometers, <laughs> how would it be fun? But anyhow, Dubai, they can afford, they want to show the world that they are the leaders in technology, modern technology. They don't bother about cost, cost effectiveness. No, it is, there, it is not a concern. The image is concerned. Of course, that brings them a lot of prestige and money also. So they are trying hyperloop. Fine. Bombay to Pune, possibly yes, fine. But within a city, and there is a both a double question mark and a triple exclamation mark. That is what we are doing. But these are the trends in technology that is taking place. But most important is what is coming is the artificial intelligence. That is the new thing that is affecting. And this digital transformation is changing, is the main disruptive element in urban transport, at least theoretically, not if not to India, but anywhere else, other countries. And when I was in Dubai, when professor asked me to talk to you and that day came this newspaper which says what revolution is there can you read this one 
So, 2070 is the year that we have committed to have net zero carbon emission. Well, we should aim. aim. So, if that is so, then urbanization policy, I expect, I expect we had a process of aggregation. Urban areas, class one cities, metropolitan cities, mega cities, multi mega cities. Now the process of decentralization will take place. At the end of, particularly at the national level, you have got very extensive transportation network, expressways, highways, uh, high speed rail network, extended rail network, hmm? port, ports, and then uh, airports. Every district headquarters will have an airport, big or small. So the transport is regional transportation network will be something very extensive and very effective. And that will help in the process of disaggregation of the urban areas. And finally, I feel that we may end up in having Puras. Puras are the concept which Professor Indiration, ex-director of IIT Chennai, propounded. Then our ex-president Abul Kalam Azad Yohari. Kalam sir, um, adopted and uh, supported, but now it has again gone out of consideration. But it is necessary to revive. Puras will become the thing. Small communities, self-contained, and they are connected to the world. Metaverse says a billion people are connected. So why did they need to sit in a city? Cities developed because people wanted to be close to each other to get connected. Now that thing is gone, that need is gone. So you need not suffer the congestion, you need not suffer the pollution, you need not suffer your neighbor creeping into you. Nothing. You can stay anywhere and lead a good life and enjoy all the fruits of development. And then you have, along with the new urbanization policy, new urban transport policy. We have an urban transport so-called policy 2002, but it is a very benign document. It is a lifeless document. I am sorry we lost because of that one nearly 20 years, 15 years of nothing. Do you know what has happened finally? It, 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 it said it is, its, its objective is to promote public transport. But do you know, you see the figures, the share of public transport has come down. Drastically, it has come down in cities. Hmm? So, what is the use of a policy which professes public transport, but it results in a reduction in the existing share, let alone improving of the share? But anyhow, this is what has happened. That why we think is because we planners, we do not criticize, we do not, we just follow, we do not want to lead or rather we do not want even to say criticize but anyhow we, it is time that you think of starting uh, formulating a new urban transport policy which primary definition definition dimension should be urban mobility connectivity and accessibility and uh, all other components related to that one and to do that one you need some institutional framework. Institutional framework which includes monetary policies, it includes fiscal policies, it includes organization policy framework like AMTA. Well, I don't want to discuss AMTA now. If Professor says come and talk again some other times on AMTA, I can do that one. But I am quite sure he will not ask me. <laughs> but that is a different issue. But the present AMTAs that we are having are more in substance than uh, more in form than in substance. You just look at the AMTA, I am quite sure most of them they don't even meet for years. Chennai has got, Hyderabad has got, they are all appendix to the UDA. Chennai, Hyderabad the AMTA is the appendix to the UDA. And AMTAs are formulated in new cities just to get money because they made a metro condition, metro policy that to get metro funding you must have an AMTA. So they just want to have an AMTA. So they form an AMTA, easy, but afterwards get the money, AMTA, Metro, forget about AMTA. They don't even meet. They don't have power, they don't have jurisdiction, 
they don't have functions, defined functions, and they don't have legal support. And apart from AMTA, you need to move towards an Urban Transport Act. What could be the, the structure of an Urban Transport Act? It is, people should think over. South Africa has got an act, but we need an act. If their urban areas are so important and urban transport is so critical, then we must have a legal base to do good work. So hopefully, hopefully, do you know today urban transport is not part of it, is not considered as a function. Components are di distributed under central list, some are distributed under state list. But my thesis is that urban transport should be recognized as a function and it should be brought under concurrent list. Well, that is a long way off. But hopefully, I hope things will take place and change over a period of time. And it is for you youngsters to demand change. Not only you accept change, which you have to, but you must demand change. And you must say what change, form of the change should be. So with that, I say thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Abdul, thank you very much. So nice of you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Be there. I just want to tell my young planners to react because they must be having a lot of ideas. And I think it is a very you know, thought provoking. And it's also, I have already taken about eight page notes for your, your lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, it, it's very important. You know, it's not that I, I was trying to get somebody to speak on the technology, but it, it, it's experience uh, from the uh, beginning of. Uh, what we can say that uh, it was always true that uh, look at from the planning efforts we made from 1961 onwards from Delhi Master Plan. So now we've gone through the more than you know 60 years of planned efforts. But still, uh, my students will uh, appreciate that what are the points we brought out, what is neglected and ignored. This is what invisible. We will take it everything light, and then we will always see fascinated to the modern technology. Okay, immediately take a topic and then do research and then get a mark, some certificate and months and go away. But that's not the way to do research. Research is what it is today. True. A lot of ideas, a lot of ideas. I mean, it is really amazing that uh, people can talk about technology. That's why Sarah also told me that not technology. It is, it is, a, it is a society, you know, whom you are planning for that, you know, more important. Unless uh, they are concerned, we do, don't take it. And then for the fascination and status and for compulsion, everything is done. Ministers go there, foreign country, come back and say what they are doing. We do that. But their lifestyle is different. And Americans are living in a different environment. All human beings, okay, fine. But Singaporeans are living in a different environment. Or in African people are living in a different environment. Sir has told that how Kenyan people are using uh, public transport in the neighborhood level where you don't you know metal the road and everything and because they don't want they don't want it because there is a there is a rational it's not that we you know every street and corner in front of my house last week they have completely cemented concreted and i could see that the small children bicycle is now stopped they are not able to come a lot of so many vehicles come. exactly he has very clearly presented that you know is the local level planning is more important it's not that making level and there's a one unit and then say everything is done mobility plan is prepared fascinated by all uh, you know private companies and come in the market and say prepare a very nice plan and submit and then go away and they look for another plan for another city they are not concerned about what going to happen in the master plan they're given and this is what they know it is it's a takeaway and throw away that's what happening in terms of planning process so i, I made this particular uh, you know juncture to invite um because you know, experience speak, you know, it's more important than textbook. I don't think that has been referred to so many textbooks. You follow these standards and all. No, that's not my interest too. That's you are learning from your classes. And so many young teachers are teaching you about all new technology, you know. So now, uh, this all rural urban divide was talking about spatial divide. Now they are digital divide. Now we are going on what? What divide? I don't know. All this intelligence divide and all is going to come. But is it uh, rational to think in terms of our Indian society? Who is going to benefit? Sir has very clearly pointed out that metro uh, ro metros are going running uh, on both sides of the rich people. You know, they, they, they don't even walk, they even come. 
they are also demanding for railway stations and bus stand to have a car, car parking place and they come in and then take another vehicle and go so when you are designing a metro and then you need to plan for parking who is going to park why then metro is used for who will be using so these are a very rational question to think you know because the ridership what we are discussing about professor was telling about millions and millions you know it's a, it's a millions of crores of rupees investment and what the benefit so this is very seriously you have to think because whatever we learn in the class technology planning standards all international experiences are fine good to lesson learned but finally coming to the application it is your own neighborhood your own friends and relatives what they are doing sir sir i have given i have asked them to do some exercise about how the mobility pattern of their own all 40 students have done an exercise about how they move from the house to the uh, various facilities social networks of very interesting and also i asked them to find out which are the places you feel very safe and safe routes when you are using different modes that's a practical and then i asked them to do some survey and find out from your own neighborhood people and that comes from a you know kind of an assignment submitted i i read and understand is amazing to see that that kind of input is required for planning so so this is what i i don't know sir i always give an assignment a practical experience no downloading from uh, you know internet and give that assignment and give marks no and the planners to know the reality social reality i mean technology will give you all hundreds of books will be there you can go through the formula and the models and everything but going around the society understand the people and that's more important more practical you know that is what mostly the sir is highlighting about social cohesion you know i also discuss in the class here 3 hours 4 hours flight nobody talk each other but the second class travel uh, travel in the train is very interesting how many people travel who will be traveling where second ac the first ac and all will be coming no so, so this is what we have we have to think uh, you know broadly about what is the requirement what is the reality what what is that you are planning to whom that is important and i think it is very interesting i have taken a number of points but thank you for your uh, lecture i am going to use it for my next class of <laughs> that so it is also a lesson for me you know because many things your experience uh, when my compared to me it's much more rich than uh, what what i am also experiencing now so finally maybe um, I, i have to supplement your ideas about we said the 2070 Uh, 70 is the target where you miss a free society and city and all we talking about that means uh, how many years of uh, you know you know planning that means 2000 suppose we say 60s onwards we have started planning this almost we are now thinking about 110 years later now now we crossed about 60 years now 61 is the planning time so 60 years of experience and now you are the young planners to think about how we can do something as a very micro level i don't think all of you think very broadly about sir has given about 10 uh, it's like a 10 commandments what we have to do from urbanization policy to transport policy to require but a micro level a small study can make a lot of change you know that's what the change you should become a change is that's what uh, ragnar sir also proposing that you should be open for your mind and you know? Anyway, it's it's, it's a really uh, I I I take it as a very really pleasant morning and uh, and, and uh, a holiday morning. I think it's better uh, uh, you all uh, attended very well and then uh, present important. And now you can even you know speak to sir also any any kind of uh, queries you have. Please uh, we'll give some time for you. Come on, yeah. More than question, rather they can observation. They can express their views. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, chat. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Say, say whatever you feel like. Say no, sir. What are all you are telling is rubbish. We need high technology, and we don't care who uses it. It is important. Technology is our life source. Say that one. No problem. Yes, yeah. No. I am instigating you to yes. react. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, having. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Vikash. I thought that uh, having the metro networks along major road corridors inside the city is a very efficient way of uh, planning the network. But uh, uh, since it is uh, already in the developed area, the accessibility towards uh, to the poor people is less. That yeah. is something a new view that I got today. Exactly. Think exactly. Of it like that. Exactly. You must find out who are your potential users and then yeah. align the network. Yeah. Not that because it is convenient, road network is there. It's convenient to construct 
and go ahead engineers are interested in construction they are very good in construction they are not concerned with planning who uses that is not their job they want to do a good job of construction but it is planners must uh, protest no this is not the alignment go along uh, now that uh, underground technology is accepted it's a little bit costly it doesn't matter the city can afford to do, spend in the initial in yeah, 100 years it will live so go on now you can access all the poor people below the slums you can run your metro so you can directly access the system why not yes next So you are all from different states. You can even just uh, give a glimpse what you, what's happening in your city. You can just tell that you know. How far is the university from the city center? Uh, your so college? It's about uh, five to ten kilometers. Not even ten kilometers, three four kilometers. Not very long. Very far. Not very far. I know people are have got lot of ideas, but they are uh, little bit. <laughs> hesitant to express them <laughs> but let your mind think over let there be a churning in your mind what this professor is telling old man he doesn't know what is reality <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> let let it churn yes yes then yes. you will come up with new ideas you see correct yes. one one defect in our planning that is hardly any innovation we just follow what other did 20 years back then but in other components in other sectors of our thing there is a lot of innovation taking place why not in planning why not in urban transport development no you don't find it. so that because the churning is not there people are not ready to ask questions yeah you must not accept anything as final truth nothing is final go on questioning why make the life of the decision maker most uncomfortable by questioning him so also by questioning you are also make your life uncomfortable because you have to study you cannot just question like that you have to be very thorough and study and then only you can ask a, uh, a pointed question so your life also will become uncomfortable push this up like the others life also uncomfortable then only yeah. progress will come yeah oh that's why i said minimize it so that you can go to the camera Hello. Can't hear you. Please raise your hand. Hello, sir. Yes. Anybody else? No. No, I can't hear you. Okay. Anyhow, is it here? No, I'm not able to hear you. Mike. Hello. Hello. Then stop. Ah, yes, dear. Is that the problem? Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know. We are okay only. And some participants is trying to. Okay, things. go ahead. Anybody? Go ahead. Tell yeah. your views. Tell your what you think wrong with Vijayawada. How you are going to transform Vijayawada transport system? Given full full freedom to do. Yeah. What will you take step? Yeah. What, what step? will you do? How you will disrupt the system and then make it into a most effective system? If you have the full freedom and money. Yeah. Idea must be there, no? Then only the question of some money comes. But if idea is not there, what is the use of money? Churn, churn. <laughs> okay. We are ten minutes short of our time schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that. Yeah. Darshan, Alpha, all uh, Mobinis, whoever were uh, already written a lot of you are all published papers, you know, on uh, gender friendly and all. You know. Say something very interesting. See, I just want to add one more thing. When you are saying, I missed the thing. We are mm -hmm. tending towards what is known as. two things multi modal transport planning and then tod these are the two in things being talked about now 
but what is multimodal transport planning multimodal transport planning is that you can perform a particular trip by using many more modes more effectively than using one single mode so that question comes more effectively more efficiently and all qualities will have to be added but to do multimodal transport planning it is not enough that you have a metro and at the station you create parking space no that is not enough people resist transfer if you see the value of time transfer the value that you attach for in vehicle travel time if it is 1 for waiting time walking time you attach value 2 for waiting you attach 3 for transfer you your value is 4 people avoid transfer like anything so how do we make people still come park and get into the system second there are so many things integrated fare structure who will you have to buy one ticket wherever you go and then whichever mode and then you end your journey by doing more than two modes or three modes but how will you distribute the the fare box to different operators operators are different how do you bring them all this very, very complex issue of multimodal transport planning then of course tvod tvod is being talked about in that lot kakardama in uh, delhi for the last 20 years it is being talked about more than that nothing is happening because tvod to do tvod is most difficult job it requires a dedicated organization it requires long period more than 20 years for development particularly if it is brown field but these two things are necessary to optimize our investments so multimodal transport planning without tvod is not possible with tvod without multimodal transport planning is impractical so these two things if we can integrate and then look at it how it can be done i think that is be good for urban development per se yes. including transport mm. yeah okay i think even is a multi modal transport also we can talking about today in the already well established metropolitan cities already a transport net is created now we are going for multi modal there is a mismatch even in many cities we are facing the problem but the i am just only wondering what happened to our new cities which is planned also but there is no multi modal concept also there chandigarh is pl- planned also there is nothing we it was planned long time ago there's no chandigarh much- is also very old 50 years old now uh, then gandhinagar is planned for cyclist track you know, that mevada it was presented with a very great idea but nowhere cyclist track used no you talk about amravati i don't uh, think it's a track is, network there it's not implementing no that's a whole track is not going amravati to is the best place your uh, student must give a plan for amravati new plan Yeah. This is But how the network consists of uh, multimodal, also no nothing. It was not no cycle track on that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why multimodal? If the cyclists can perform and, and complete their need uh, travel need, there is no need for multimodal. You don't need any other. Yes, yes, yes. So you come out. Let the students give them a challenge. Give a new plan for Amravati. Scrap the present plan. Yes. It is electric. Whatever you call, give them all uh, sort of adjectives. Scrap them. come out with your new plan yes. where people all people can meet satisfy their needs now this technology has helped you this uh, covid has taught us a lesson that is their movement is not necessary for life movement now has become necessary for recreation so there is one uh, chat there is a question from raju sundaramurthy hmm So I read you, uh, read for you. Do we have robust, dynamic, and uh, reusable transport model developed for any Indian city to assess the varying travel demand and carrying impact study, etc., for changing developmental scenario? <laughs> Good question, but to a wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> In the sense that transport modeling is. a major area of interest of almost most of the transport planners within india outside india and the techniques of transport modeling has gone much much beyond because of the new technologies that is available new software that are available now you can use many variables to incorporate in the model to see which variable is the most effective which gives the more uh, uh, right figures demand level and then you can also moderate the demand 
by varying the variable and thereby incorporate changes in the urban structure which is the base for transport demand model so you both interactions you can do it's not that given a transport land use structure you find estimate the travel demand now it enables you to tell no this land use must be changed to this so you it is a two way process that can be done and as i told you you can have 10000 uh, uh, zones in your city area so that you know each area what is its speciality you can have as many variables as you can find data good data to incorporate to see which is the variable which is most effective in influencing travel demand there are many variables which are not necessary they are by that we can ignore but there are very many which are very critical or you can do transport model not as a per se overall general you can do transport model by purpose wise you can do work trip model you can do education trip model you can do recreation trip model so each one has got its own uh, specialities and thereby its own requirements of a network so you can satisfy because if you do one model predominantly work trip will dominate peak hour will dominate so your network will be for that purpose but if you do different thing recreation trips are taking place in non peak hours their their, their desires are different from work uh, desires so you can de develop a network to suit them then amalgamate the different network so this challenge is going on i am not in a position to discuss what is the latest techniques and technologies who are the best but any model it depends upon what variables that you are using and that variable will give the result relevant to that variable so if you are using only work trip then it will give you a result which is suitable for work trips and recreation trips will get missed recreation trips desires will be different their time periods are different and they are growing recreation trips will in american cities you will find there more than 20% perhaps but in india it is only still less than 5% but it is going to grow it will become 10 15% then that will make a major demand and your recreational sources are not accessible today when i said our objective is accessibility how how, much, how easily you can reach the ghats of uh, krishna river in vijayawada very difficult to reach the ghats only religious people go there to take their bath you don't go there for recreation purpose it's a, such a beautiful area to go and spend some time but the accessibility is difficult so you do trip modeling not generalize but do by purpose by by time period wise different you can do variety in the large number of models and then develop network for each and then amalgamate the different network then you will get what is cost possibly a most feasible solution here also there will be trade trade offs sometimes you will have to do trade off between one objective to another that is always happens in planning okay yes sir Oh, uh, Mr. Raju, is it uh, you want to have any feedback from what the professor said? Yeah, please go ahead. Who? What Raju Sundar? Ah, uh, please. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah, please. Yes, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yeah. yeah. Question is uh, something different. The answer is also very relevant. I agree with the professor. Professor. Thing is, for any Indian city so far, we have mm. developed so many transport models for so many cities. Mm. Where it is in a reusable form. Mm. Because most of the models are use and throw. It is used for only one purpose. Mm. You want to do some other study for the same city. We are engaging a consultant mm. and going ahead with that. And new survey, new analysis, all those things are happening. But why don't we have a reusable model? Right? i am not talking about number of parameters variables and all those things same variable same parameters mm. depending upon the situation changing scenario variable can be modified mm. right and accordingly analysis can be performed whether it is in a reusable form reuse see every model is geographic location specific and people specific it is meant for, if you have done a model for bombay it is relevant to bombay's characteristics geographic characteristics 
special characteristics and people's characteristics so you can use that model upgrade it for bombay city for future years or for every time you do any major planning you can use a particular model developed say a few years back upgrade it and use it but whether you want to use that bombay model to vijayawada then the big question arises Uh, whether it's relevant or other things. So, well, for just making a gross estimate in a short time to understand the dimension of the issue that you are going to face, you can apply a model and get a result. But it may not be relevant for translating that output into investment actions programs. possibly you have to do you can do need not do a complex model even for vijayawada for practical purpose the model should be simple it must be understandable by different decision makers it's not that you as a sophisticated modelist you will have a complex model which you can understand but if i am going to say yes or no to a proposal i must understand that i am safe or ground so i must understand and realize that if the model i cannot understand the intricacies then i will hesitate to say yes so the model for application should be as simple as possible but for research it could be as complex as possible so research model will tell the trends simple model will tell the for application so you have to balance between these two yeah but these both the things must go on the researcher must keep on doing modeling for modeling sake but unfortunately nobody supports If say if somebody says I will do modeling for modeling sake, they will say go home. Nobody will pay you. That yeah. is the present trend. They will only want a useful one. Now, how far it is useful to me? How much money I get back? Yeah. So that is the problem. It will take a long time, but it is where the academic should come forward. Now there is some reasonable support for academics to do research for research purpose. we should cash on that correct yeah i, I do agree with uh, rangadhan sir see i also come across uh, many of my students are fascinated with models they will say fuzzy logic model is a title and they do studies and come out with a 0.5 percentage is okay i mean 5.99 is all right they come out with a good number and say uh, that's where everything is correlation is there everything is there then my only question is how you will translate into plan i want to see on the road as a planner i would like to see your model and applicable locally that's precisely rangana sir telling is that see model is all all some techniques we can use to come out with our idea and we can do some kind of analysis and then but outcome is important how is that model is going to really practically usable in the circumstances where otherwise model is universal person who study transport planning in uh, dubai or in delhi or in chennai or in, even in uh, you know in a foreign country they use the same kind of model only it, it's a parameter set of parameters you use at in uh, you know criteria then use the formula and then come out with a number that's not not the uh, solution for taking further into planning action that is more important where i feel also there is missing link there so many models are there but application to that particular model to the practical development suppose i am a city planner i ask you okay you have done a fantastic study and model is very good but they tell me what i am to supposed to do on the road or on the other infrastructure provision so that's that's missing point because research is not just to wind up with the numbers and then finally we'll say that is enough yeah. and that uh, raju is sir is asking about uh, you know re- recycling i don't know uh, how one particular uh, A design concept can be re re <clears throat> what regulators are also telling. I'm also agree with that. You, a neighborhood level, your mobility pattern is different than a zonal level, a city level. Suppose you come out with a very interesting neighborhood level design where you can access to not not access to the motorized vehicle and it's only for mobility for children, adults, and then we you know we 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 know the street for uh, society, social streets, and all we talk people talk about. Now that has become a fashion, you know, go to the city center and make a street with a lot of paintings and everything, and you come out with a social street, and that's only that's there. Okay, ornamental, which come out with nicely in the picture, and photographs are there. Ministers or somebody will come inaugurate, and that will come in the newspaper. But how do we do that as a neighborhood level? 
today people are talking about uh, i also read some articles about you know the the cities are say, sold you know cities are for sale sale something like that so that what is that attractiveness is a concept now coming up when i worked with one of the paris uh, uh, you know group of planners and they come out with an idea that attractiveness is attracting investment to the high investment uh, projects including metros it is but i am looking at you, you don't look at the city uh, where 70 to 60 to 70 percent of the people are in living in a different type of neighborhoods why not we attract the neighborhoods where people can live and neighborhoods are not like a place where the huge investment everybody is spending crores of rupees to buy a plot or a flat together a neighborhood of 20000 population it's a huge investment who made the people made but did we, did, do we have a plan to make this neighborhood attractive for them this is what i have to publish you know on our book also published by one of the french you know planners this is something what i am looking at that uh, the replication reusable thing is not the word which is used to recycling reusing you know, management but it is a planning reality what is the reality in a neighborhood so then we can think about okay yes we can make something recyclable the design which implementable which can be used for people then it is okay i will accept that recyclable what you suggest uh, you you have any something unfortunately in india our modeling exercise is only once for the next 20 years we don't do anything further yes what modeling exercise is only first you do for starting purpose to uh, understand the dimension of travel demand 20 years ahead but then next year you can do more uh, more remodel uh, uh, recalculate next every 3 years yes. to find out what is happening what is the change is taking place in the city structure how the travel demand is changing no we don't do yeah. we get tired by doing the modeling yeah. or uh, it is uh, left to the consultant and consultant does their model and goes away he is not interested yeah. in the city yes it is the city people who are interested yes this is must be a continuous process of modeling do a simple model go on sophisticating increasing its complexity right. everything it, it should never stop the process of modeling should never stop because you are reviewing your actions and seeing what is the result on the demand that you have estimated what changes are taking place and what revisions are need to be made but we don't do that is a defect in our uh, planning system yeah correct yes mr raju you are you are want to say something please yeah uh, <coughs> same thing sir this what uh, i was emphasizing more on the reusable yes sir that's uh, professor also explained yeah. yes i i worked as an academician uh, as a government officer and consultant mm. um i have gone through several process of the planning the problem is there one model for one study that immediately after Three years. If some new project comes, let's say some new new metro line is added or deleted, right. then we need a new consultant. We go for a preparation of new model, right? Which is waste of time, waste of money. Absolutely. Model, right. model is reusable. That will save a lot of money, yes, and sir. the professionals some will also have some satisfaction. This is what I wanted. Is there anything done for any city? Of, uh, no, no. Country? See, the problem, Rajesh Sir, is this. For Vijayawada, a model has been developed, good or bad, for transportation planning or Vijayawada transport planning. Who prevents you to reuse that one? Yes. Upgrade it and reuse. Nobody prevents you. Exactly. But when you give an opportunity, next consultant, he wants to show his importance. Yes. He neglects. He won't even refer to this earlier study. Chariyan, he will Chariyan. say as if he is doing de novo. He wants to show his importance. So he yeah. develops another model, right. which. It is a time waste of time. You don't proceed further. You don't move forward. You exactly. go around circle in the same around the same point. Nobody prevents you to use a model that has already been developed. One thing. Second thing is, you don't have access to that model also. Model does not mean just form. You will require all the input data and other things. The consultant does it, and uh, he it gives to the uh, the client, the municipal corporation. we gave all the data and everything all the files to the municipal corporation i don't think they will even be able to remember where it is they will not be able to put their hand so that will, the whole model becomes useless this is another effect that yes. is where long time back 
we talked about NUTIS, National Urban Transport Information System. And uh, one suggestion I made long time back is that every consultant must be obliged to transfer all data that he has collected, all models that he has made, prepared, all designs he has made in uh, digital form to the client. Most of the time they don't agree. Client, uh, consultant does not want to share his secrets because he thinks it is monopoly will get reduced. So they don't want to share his techniques of modeling. Second thing is the client, even if he gives, he will not be able to use it. He will not even properly store it. That in no time it becomes yes. useless. Yes. So there is nothing wrong in reusing the model. Only yes. thing is review it. Upgrade it to a minor extent as possible and use it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I was under, but Raju sir, please go ahead. Yeah. Because for small countries like uh, Gulf countries, they have yeah. a robust model. Even for a small impact study, countries refer to the government and they put all the new developments in the model. And the true, true, true. true. Uh, this is what happening. But, yeah, but, you know, but, but have you have you analyzed yeah. how they can do it? Uh, because, how they can do because all the input data for model, latest data is readily available. They did not go to do the survey. Yes. If you see, if I am given a transport planner, most of my two years of study, one and a half years, I will spend in surveys. Only six months is used for thinking and modeling purpose. But for them, everything is available data, continuous updated data. Yeah. So they access, so they straight away start doing modeling. Yes, sir. That's this is the difference this, between them and us. Yes, correct, sir. This is what I am raising in many forums. At least right. for one city in our country, na, one yeah. or two cities, we should have this culture and yeah. everybody should support. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And See, that, is, yeah. that is where we have failed in smart city development. See, yes. smart city with all these big names and all these things, euphoria, finally it is reduced nothing but projects. At yes. the end of the day, 100,000 crores for 100 cities in 10 years. Means 100 crores per city per year. What is 100 crores for Vijayawada? <laughs> How we can transfer Vijayawada into a smart city, so called? Yes, yes. All the money should have been invested in few selected cities to demonstrate what needs to be done, how we can change the process of planning. But one of these things is the continuity of thinking. We don't have continuity of thinking. Master plan once prepared. Yes. It is stagnant for the next 10 years, 20 years. Correct. This is what this is really unfortunate in our country. I know yes, Professor Rangnath, I know Professor Rangnath, sir. I met him. We interacted in several forums. I was in Sitco that time. Sir. Hmm. Ah, yeah. I know. Oh, you are in you are in Sitco. Sitco. Oh. Uh, Aras Murthy. My name is Aras Murthy. Yes, Aras Murthy, yes. You did for a Chhattisgarh project. Yes, yes. yes. Bombay. Ah, sir. Now Mumbai. So, Raju sir, where are you based now? So, currently, I am with a consulting firm. I am a retired person. Yes, sir. I worked as a transport engineer in Sitco. Okay, okay. Sir. very where good. Now, which city you are now? Uh, uh, Mumbai, sir. I was a transport yeah, planner. You, you, are, you are now based in Mumbai. Based in, <coughs> based in Navi. Okay, sir. I did my PhD in land use transport planning from IIT Bombay. Okay. Bombay? Uh, later yeah. part of my career. Raju sir, Bombay, last I did two studies for Bombay. First time they developed Professor Raghavachari help a sophisticated uh, model. Yes, I don't yes. know, second time they did again the thing. Whether yes. they upgraded Updation. the model or reconstructed the model, I don't know. Updation, update. Updation, update. Yeah, very good. That means they have used the model. But when it comes to individual projects, okay, that is done at a regional level. When it comes to the project, of course, no, recently no. we can accept for Mumbai. Mm. No. But in no. other cities, other cities, no, it is not happening. For example, See, Chennai. Model is for a, one model is for the perspective planning. Then project planning is you know, have different models. You should have to keep on modeling. Mm. Really, all all models are these modelings were involved in all projects. Detailed mm. studies were carried out. The idea is, my question is, but it should be in a reason, even for small city, moderate cities, that mm -hmm. could be useful for whenever you do some, whenever you add some new links, whether it is mm -hmm. road or rail mm -hmm. or... Mm -hmm. Correct. 
the same model should be in a position to be used. Yes. Correct. Minor modification. It is possible. It is possible. It is not happening in our uh, country. This is what I thought. This uh, one forum I can vent out my feelings. <laughs> correct. <laughs> you are very correct. You are very correct. That's what I'm telling. There, somebody must be continuously thinking about that model. The local client who is responsible for the city development must have in within the in-house capacity. Who will, somebody will be keeping updating that model every year. No, sir. This is not happening in many cities. It this doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Intentionally yes. or unintentionally, mostly intentionally. Yes, yes. Because people don't want to share their idea. Because new man, new man comes. He has he to start with Dino. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we produce so many transport planners in our country, <laughs> our country and everywhere people are working. That's and I mean, this travel <laughs> demand is the basic thing for uh, doing various analyses and uh, recommending different type of infrastructures. There, if you have uh, weak uh, this thing. Aju sir, by the time the transport planner finishes his surveys, so extensive traffic yes, engineering, traffic surveys, traffic characteristics, travel characteristics. Speed and you prepare such huge volume report, but nobody reads it first. Secondly, you also don't use most of the data for your model. Yes, yes. You can analyze how much of data that you collect and you, you really use. Really clear. I was also in charge for nearly fifteen. <laughs> Comprehensive mobility plan preparation, ah, 15 cities in India. Correct, correct. I agree with you, but this is what uh, ultimately I feel. No, finally, you <laughs> end up normative. <laughs> model speed 70%. Nobody, nobody is using the model for next exercise. It which is very yeah. hard, but continued, yeah, that is the problem. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Raju, sir, it was very really nice to <laughs> speak to you and, and uh, your uh, participation is really, the, I take it as like another expert sharing your rich experience with our students. And Thank if you, you can share you. your contact number or uh, sure, sure. we will have right. in touch. Because, you know, oh. kidding yes, experts into the, you know, collective. Radak, Radak has, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Radak, you can spare it. You can give them their uh, their number also to me. From, from time I can. Yeah, yeah please. I will. Yeah, yeah, I can ask him to. I ask. Uh, request him to put in the chat box where uh, he can give me the contact. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll share. So, yes, I think we should call it a day. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Yeah. I must be. I am very much thankful to you because I had the opportunity to talk to your students, whether they listened or not. I don't care. But I. <laughs> okay. I I can see their faces, smiling faces. That is very nice. Are there photographs or are there real faces? Um, many of them are photographs. If you all, uh, you can put all your, uh, you know, pictures. And somebody can take a picture. No, Vignesh. No, what I see the faces are Vignesh. sitting in the front of the system. Yes, sir. You can ask them to, uh, switch on the, you know, video and yeah, hello. Do picture. Huh? Like okay. Okay. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your studies. Take hey, Vignesh. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, Vignesh. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll yes, ask. Dear. Uh, yes, dear. Or all of you can uh, sir, put your right. pictures. Yes, yes, right now. Pardon? What did you say? Otherwise, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. Mm. So, hello. Okay, sir. Um, okay, I think we will take leave. I thank you for your time. And then uh, it was really an uh, interesting uh, two hours, uh, you know, exchange of ideas. And then, oh, two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> but, so definitely, it's a good for, food for thought only. Definitely, it's yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thinking, yeah. Thank See, you, sir. Will, connectivity uh, for some other is very important. Social connectivity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And all these things have only made me to start this course because of uh, internationally, I was saying social, um, this uh, transport sociology is being taught in many schools, in foreign, but in our Indian school planning schools, there's no subject mm -hmm. except technology and uh, planning, but at least we need. Unfortunate some, part of it, unfortunate. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, I will share with you one idea. When we did Chhattisgarh uh, transport plan. Yes, sir. Uh, instead of doing the project evaluation, cost based analysis, Normally, you use only the economic terms, yes, cost sir. and benefits in money terms. Yeah. We introduced two other components, 
social issues eh? mm. and then environmental issues some yeah, value some point. we developed and introduced do you know she tried as a thing mitali you know mitali ah uh, yeah she is an economist who used to work for the year so we did try that modeling including these two components and yes, we yes. found quite a number of projects change their priority when right. you use these two components unfortunately unfortunately for a client consultant organization that model analysis remained on the files and the pages the decline nothing for that nobody translated into a, a paper sense. published for general information everybody in a client or a consultant office they move from one project to another project they have yes. no time for uh, re uh, review retrospect introspect yes. so that died but it oh. is possible to introduce yes. Yes. social issues yes. into the evaluation project environmental issues only thing yes. is you must try to get uh, monetary values for certain uh, yes sir actions. that is the difficulty that is where research is called for yes sir some of my students are interested in working on such these are the issues maybe i will ask them to contact you please maybe they disturb you you can help them oh yeah they are welcome welcome <laughs> okay sir i share your uh, contact number with them and then please yeah. okay thank you so much and uh, have a nice uh, for the future Day. my pleasure and thank you all and wish you all all the best thank you my friends students okay we'll see you later bye bye excuse me uh, can i just uh, i am alpana uh, here good afternoon yes, please. Please. good afternoon yes, please. yes good afternoon uh, i had the opportunity of working with uh, sir in quite a few projects uh, okay. <laughs> and he keep just keep it secret keep our <laughs> secret <laughs> secret can you and just introduce yourself you know let our students also know that Yes, I am uh, Alpana Bose. I was also working in uh, CES. Oh, yeah. Now um, I'm um, I'm consultant with Asian Development Bank, and okay. uh, I'm also a visiting faculty in School of Planning and Architecture, Delhi. Okay. So, uh, sir was talking about this uh, Chhattisgarh project. Uh, on this, I will just add one uh, note to that. what has happened i was also involved in that chatisgarh project uh, 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 planning and designing of naya raipur mm, okay. so uh, now what has happened in that project the, that naya raipur has has been planned but uh, the latest trend has been observed that the, the, uh, the naya raipur is um, i think uh, 20 kilometers from uh, raipur okay so but the new trend what is uh, the trend continues that the development is uh, along durg corridor uh, durg bhilai corridor from raipur development in naya raipur is not happening as as it was uh, planned so now there is going to be a study and why it is not happening why what what is that is required to have the development towards naya raipur instead of durg so that is uh, that is going to be a f- future that is going to be studied that is another thing probably you could also have research why certain uh, nodes that get developed why some uh, transport routes get developed other doesn't good good do it yes we, <laughs> that is that, is, uh, that uh, they are planning some study on that Very so good. let's see how how it shapes up yes alpana ma'am you are still with the ces now in delhi office no 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 ces uh, yes. it is it is uh, now it has been taken over by jacobs i am okay. uh, i am consultant uh, with asian development bank okay I will just pass on your contact. We will also win the chance. Thank you. Hi, sir. Thank you. Your contact details. Maybe we will win the chance. Okay. I'll 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 uh, share your contact details. I, I will share the contact details in the chat box also. Okay.
So is it? Yes, sir. Is it ready? Um, yes. Okay. Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, sir. You can leave now. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. So nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Also. Very good. Nice to hear you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. We we'll talk later separately. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm switching off. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you all of you. Then we will meet later. Okay, bye. Thank you, sir.